Welcome back to another edition of Five Questions. This is your girl, AJ the Suburban Princess, back with my holiday edition. Before the year ended, I could not wait to interview this next guest because she is sweet, she is funny, she is raw. She is one of my favorite podcasters now on the Lipstick League with Natalie Eganoff, who you might see from Parks uh, Casino and all the PR me- media she does. Welcome my guest from the afternoon stint of 925 yeah, X to you, correct? X to you, yes. country <laughs> station. Yes. And then also co host of the Lipstick League. Please join me in welcoming my guest, Nicole Mahalik. Hey, girl. Thank you. And you, wow, and you even got my na- last name right. Thank I listened you. to you. I listened because I knew I the way you said it was different. Yes. Because yeah, I was going to well, say Nick. I into like Machala. McCulloch. I was like, no, it's Mahalik the Sea Silent. I'm sorry. It's yes, I always way. hear you. Yeah. I listen to you. You had me cracking up on one of the most recent episodes because when you were talking about it, you guys were talking about Adele. And when you're just like, I feel and I feel it. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> yes. I understand. But thank you so much for doing this, making time. Of course. Um, with these holidays, I figured I'd want to end this segment for, my, for this year with a bang. And you are definitely a spark plug for me. Thank you. Thank the one you. who inspires me to just, just make everything fun. And you do. Thank so, you. So first of all, I just want you to introduce yourself in general by just telling me where you're from. And yeah. also as a woman like myself, who's, who had like pipe dreams of being on TRL and being on TV, what yeah. made you, what made you want to get into this media, um, as radio and, and, or TV when you started? So, yeah. So I grew up in a very small town in the Poconos, Northeastern PA called Summit Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, my whole family, it's all like little coal mining town. So my town literally does have no traffic lights. It's just stop signs. Mm-hmm. Um, Everyone is what was white and Catholic, um, mm-hmm. went to Catholic school my whole life. Um, my whole family is still there, which is nice. The fact that like everybody's kind of still there. So like when I do go home and I go home pretty frequently, mm-hmm. um, especially now I have a new baby niece. So that's been really fun. Um, mm-hmm. But I've always been um, a ham is the best way I could describe it. Like I remember being like three standing on my aunt Janet's mantle performing Twas the Night Before Christmas in July. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like. I was like part of the Glory Dillon studio of dance from like when I was three until I was 17. Like I took lessons and then I ended up teaching for, for two years in high school. Um, and then like I was president of my student council. Like I always just like loved people and like being, you know, out and about. And I was always just obsessed with entertainment. And, mm-hmm. you know, like I just remember I got, even when I was, you know, little, like I loved New Kids on the Block when I was like 11. And then I loved like Backstreet and NSYNC and Britney mm-hmm. and I just like always loved pop culture. My Grammy, my mom's mom would take us to New York every year to see the Rockettes. And like, I always just like loved being in the city Mm -hmm. and it was just always like, wow. And it's so funny because probably like eight years ago, I had my parents' VHS tapes made into DVDs, which is kind of funny because DVDs are like obsolete now. I need to get them like remade into like the cloud, you know? And so the very first time we got our video camera, it was my brother's baptism. And I was five and a half, almost six. And my dad's, and it's like that massive ass camera that you have on your shoulder. Yes. And uh, my dad's filming and I'm like, dad, let me be on TV. Dad, I want to do a dance. Dad, let me show you this Michael Jackson dance. And he's like, Nicole, okay. Like now we got to film other people. And when I watched that for the first time, I was like, oh, I've always been like that. You know what I mean? Like. I literally, like, it's literally how I was born. Like I was just, oh, and, and like, shout out to my parents who just like encouraged me to like, you know, obviously I was not good in math. Right. And like, so they got me a math tutor and like, they encouraged me to like be myself. And so I always knew even from high school that I wanted to go to school in the city. I wanted to be in entertainment. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I was like debating with it for NYU. And then I was like, you know, New York just seems so massive, so much more expensive. And I ended up at the, and I looked at all the Philly schools, so like Temple, LaSalle, Villanova. Um, and when I walked on Drexel's campus, you, I saw the skyline and I was like, yep, this is where I want to go. Like, I wanted to be <laughs> right. like in the city, right. you know, right. and like Drexel was, it's like at the time, Drexel was like so bare bones. It was just like, now it's way more campusy. There's more restaurants, yeah, yeah. like yep. the whole thing. You know, we, I went to Drexel, but like I was, I would hang out over at Penn all the time because they had all the bougie shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, But like, but Drexel, like the campus was Philadelphia, you know, you'd like take the, you'd take the subway to the gallery. Like I remember being like a freshman or sophomore and I'm like, took the subway to the Kmart, the gallery and like bought a, Mm. bought a massive mirror and brought the mirror. I'm like, it's crazy that like I was, you know, did all that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, But I always was like in entertainment. And so 
Drexel has a co-op program. And so what they do is it's a five-year program, six months out of the year, you work in a co-op and then six months you go to school and it's okay. three different co-ops. So the very first one I did, again, I was like looking for entertainment. I was like, yeah. I felt like, and it was the Valley Forge Convention and Visitors Bureau. So basically they do PR for the Valley Forge area. Mm. And to me, that seemed like, oh yeah, okay. That's like, seemed cool. Mm -hmm. um, not really like exactly entertainment, but it felt close enough than the other jobs. And um, so anyway, I took it and it was like the least, the lowest paying job too. Cause I, with a co-op, like you get paid yeah. and I was like, I don't care. And I would drive from West, I was living at Drexel. So I drive from West Philly all the way to Plymouth meeting. I brought my car into the city and I used to listen to Q102 all the way in the drive there all day long, yeah. all the way home. Well, weirdly enough, a woman that her name is Joyce. She worked at the Valley Forge Convention Visitors Bureau. Her mm -hmm daughter was married to the marketing director at Q102's brother and so okay. they'd always see each other at family parties and this woman was like Joyce said to this woman Lisa you need to meet this girl Nicole she's obsessed with Q102 she has such a big personality and so we, I sent my resume to Lisa and Lisa's like come as an intern and like basically the rest is history so it's mm -hmm. like weirdly enough it's like I took this job thinking it was like a step closer yeah. to entertainment and it really was you know what I mean because it's like yeah. I met Lisa she hired me as an intern at Q102 and then all through college um, I interned at, well, I, I interned at Q and two, but then I worked part-time on like the promo crew. Okay. So it's like where you would like go and set up a table and hand out t-shirts. Right. And then like, I would work in the office. And I also did an internship at, um, in Epic records in New York and nine 11 was my first day. So that's a story in and of itself, yes. how I was in New York city on nine 11. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then eventually, like after I graduated from college, I moved to Dallas, Texas with an old boss um, to work at KISS FM, which is the top 40 station in Dallas mm -hmm. as the assistant promotion director. And I hated Dallas and I hated promotions. I wanted to be on the air mm -hmm. and ended up coming back to Philly. And then I like got a job nine to five as a receptionist because I needed, I don't have rich parents. So I needed to pay my rent and have health benefits. Right. And, and then I would drive every single weekend to FM 97 in Lancaster and I would do a live shift. So like I would work nine to five and then some nights I would even like still do promo stuff for Q102. And then I would drive every weekend and be on the air and in Lancaster as like, that's like the first time I got my foot in the door. And then eventually I did like part-time at B104 in Allentown. So sometimes I'd work like till five as a receptionist, like jump on the turnpike and then drive up to the Lehigh Valley, be on the air from seven to midnight, drive home, go to work the next day. Shut but the crazy up. thing is, is like, I just didn't, it didn't feel like work then. Do you right. know what I mean? Like, right, no, I know. It didn't yep. feel like it because I was I was like, I'm on the radio. <laughs> and I just, and like, even when I was a receptionist, like it was the best job. Like I yeah. loved my company. It was, the company's called Sparks. And um, mm -hmm. I always say I was like the bartender. Like I chit chat with it. Like I just, I got to perform basically. Even right. like, like that's what a receptionist really does. Like you're chit chat and you're doing the mail, you're answering right. the phones, right? So like, you know, I was like making zero money, but like, I still liked going to work every day. Right. So I always felt very blessed in that sense. And even though I was working a lot and I still wasn't really making money as I like worked my way up, I worked a lot, but it was stuff that I still really loved to do, you know? And then I went on the biggest loser. I know you wanted me to talk about that a little bit. So I'll get to yes. that in a minute. Yes. Um, but like, again, like my company was so supportive of that. And weirdly enough, yesterday, was 14 years since my biggest loser finale. Oh my God. December, eight, this, December 18th, 2007. Isn't that Shut crazy? Up. That is crazy. Like, oh my God. I was like, weird, because I still look 26. Like, weird. Girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, uh, no, that is crazy. I love this. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep and talking. So, Keep going. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, so I, so then I did like part time on Q102, and then eventually, I was full time on Q102 as Nick the Web Chick. And then I did mornings for my, because iHeart owned all those stations. So right. I was Nick the Web Chick on Q102. And then it was my 106, which turned to Mix 106, which right. turned to remember this. Real 106. And then when yeah. they flipped, the breeze is when I left. And so I was I was on voice tracking B104. I was Nick the Web Chick on Q102. I was Nicole on my 106, Mix 106. I was with Logan first doing mornings, then Chio. Yeah. Then I did middays on real. Um, and then I was the director of social media. And then when the, when the, when the station flipped and they got rid of all of us, it was like me and Chio and Shyla and Johnny V. And, uh, and then I had the opportunity X to you called and like, I never in a million years thought that I'd ever work in country yeah. like ever. <laughs> and it was one of those weird things where the way like country music over the course of like the last five years have got, has gotten like so mainstream and like so yeah. pop. And I was like, I wanted to stay in Philly. And I was like, wow, this seems like a really great opportunity. And like, it's been like the best thing that I never knew it was, I could have, if that right. makes sense. Like, I just, it's so weird how God, the universe, like whatever you believe in, um, like 
just makes it like moves things around for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I knew that I needed to leave iHeart. Like I was not fulfilled at all. Like there was, I knew that like, I was like, I'm more talented than what I'm doing. And I hated the fact that I didn't have control of, of like where, what I was doing. And I hated the fact that they flipped to real. I thought it was such a stupid decision mm-hmm. and it was cause it didn't mm-hmm. even last a year. It was the dumbest decision. It lasted mm-hmm. a little over a year. I'm sorry. And, um, you know, but again, like old white men. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. and so, yeah. And, uh, and so when I had this opportunity and like, it really is about like connections because like a guy worked with at iHeart, which was clear channel back in the day, he was at, you know, he works for Beasley now. And like, he reached out to me and like, it just kind of started all the connections. And, um, Mm. it's just weird. Like even just like the music though of country where like Dan and Shay, who's a really big country act Mm -hmm. had, had a really huge song with Justin Bieber that we played. And, you know, and I was like, they're like, Oh, we hire Nick, the web chick. And now we're playing Justin Bieber on the freaking country station. Yeah. that (laughs) yep. weird. Like it's weird how like, (laughs) yeah. How like it just all like, I don't know. It's just, it's so fascinating. And, um, yeah. So, so, and then like, obviously Natalie was at the fanatic at the time, which was our mm-hmm. sister station. And I was obsessed with Miss and Ellie for years. Cause I used to always listen to him as my drive home. And then like, he became, you know, when, the, when I finally met him in person, the first time after I started X2, I was like, listen, I'm sorry, but like you lost a main listener. Like now we're on the same time. You know what I mean? He's, yep. he's two to six, I'm three to seven, but I was like, so, so weird. And like how I became really good friends with Natalie and we started the lipstick league and, you know, she obviously moved on to, to new, to new things, but we're still do, we're still doing the podcast. And, um, yeah. again, weird, just weird how, like, it kind of just like works itself out. And sometimes I think it is a really good situation because in terms of like reminding yourself to like, trust yourself and like, trust God, trust the universe, because a lot of times, and it's something that I've learned in therapy too, like you need to feel your emotions. So if you're sad about something, if you're um, mad, if you're, if you're annoyed, it's so feel that, but like in your, in your soul, you got to trust it's happening for a reason. Right. You know what I mean? And some, and like, whatever, whatever that is, sometimes it doesn't make sense right away. And I think that like, I think even with like losing my job at iHeart, like I, as soon as it happened, I was like, yeah, I knew. Cause a, a lot of times I get real comfy. I'm a Leo. So like, I love to like lay and nap, you know, <laughs> pet me, scratch me, let me purr. You know what I mean? Yes. And so, and so what's your sign? I'm Virgo. Okay. Mm-hmm. My Virgo's rising. And yeah. so I'm like, I'm Virgo rising and Pisces is my moon, which is very, it's an interesting combination because it's like, I'm like, I feel fucking everything and I'm like super nostalgic, yes. but I'm also like super practical and realistic. And then yeah. I'm like, hi, I'm here. I'm a Leo. Green, like, <laughs> I'm a Gemini moon. I'm- so that probably explains my moods. Maybe mm-hmm, I'm like mm-hmm. off and on all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so anyway, like when that was happening, I, I was just like, I knew, I knew that it had to happen because I, I was, I got too comfy. And I used to say all the time, like, I know I need to leave, but like, where would where I go? Would I and go? like, what would I do? And like, obviously I had a contract and it's like, mm-hmm. um, and so when it happened, I was like, I'm good. And, but then I was like, oh no, I'm, this, I'm actually like mad. And so it's like, sometimes you know that it had to happen, but you still have to like feel it. And then just like trust that like, it's a, like, there's stuff working behind the scenes that you mm-hmm. might not, you know, you might not realize. And um, yeah, so it's, it is, I mean, there's still so like, it's so funny because I'm always just, I've always been such a career oriented, very passionate person. Mm -hmm. And there's always, people are always like, oh my God, you know, like you're doing afternoon to this podcast. And I was like, I know, but like, I want my own TV show. And they're like, (laughs) exactly. It's not done yet. (laughs) It's not done, you know? And it is funny though, because like I used to even say in high school, like I want my own talk show, like my old teachers who I'm like friends with on Facebook, Mrs. McDonald's, like, don't forget that you said you're going to have your own talk show. And like, you're going to do a teacher makeover episode. Like I just always knew what I wanted. And so sometimes it does get frustrating because I'm like, God, if I was like independently wealthy or like had rich parents, like you have so much more access to like things, you know? So sometimes I do have to like stop myself from being like, you are you're like you're literally doing afternoon drive you're like yeah. in a, in a top 10 market you like what you this is what you wanted so like be so proud that you did this yeah. on your own exactly. instead of like thinking about uh, the ahead right mm-hmm. so like sometimes i really need to check myself and just be like holy shit like when you would have asked like 18 year old me like you're going to be doing like you're going to have one of the top afternoon shows in the city of Philadelphia, like connecting and just do like, I would have been like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> especially in country I, like, radio. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that like, I used to say, I want my own talk show. And like, I do like, yeah. it's not necessarily like 
Oprah yet, right? Yet. But like, right? But at the, when you really think about it, it's like, oh, I actually like do have my own show. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. and it, so that's, I think what where it is too, is that like trying not to like let, um, trying not to let like the obsessiveness of like wanting to do more yeah. negate from like what you've already done and what you've accomplished. So that's kind of like, I'm like, oh no, like sometimes I have to be like, oh, this is like good. And it's, it's a it's stop, you know, and then I do get into people like, well, what's next? I'm like, what do you mean? What's next? I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> slow down right now like, <laughs> right. like you know like could you just let me like put my clothes away from my closet and like you know i'd like to like find a boyfriend too right know? right so, hell like, me too but at this time I, I prefer to be obsessed with athletes from a distance until i get my oh, mind well, i will say like friends of mine who are married and stuff i'm like whoo this, uh, <laughs> this you're you like me i'm good <laughs> I'm, I'm like like i like i watch all my hallmark movies and like i believe it like i, yeah. I believe that they, like it exists, but I'm like, it's pretty hot. Like it's pretty rare. It's, it's you know worse, what I mean? Though. It's worse. Yeah. 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 I look at my sister and her husband and their three kids and I would have never thought in a million years, my sister would have three kids. Yeah. So to see her now and it's like marriage seems to make people tired. So I'm like, I'm already. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I also yeah. like, and I don't know about you, but like, for me, it's like, I get why people get divorced because yeah. like, when you think about when you're like younger, you you're made to think divorce is like some like something happened like mm -hmm. there's an affair or like there's a lie or like there's right. a beauty. Well, no no it's the fact that like it's little things that like chip away chip yep. away then all of a sudden 15 years go by and you're like oh i don't like you like <laughs> i really don't i actually haven't <laughs> liked you for like 10 years but i've just been too tired and yes. like i had to like do homework with the kids so like we're good now so see ya you know what I mean I'll see ya drop off yes like I my get it like I totally get it so I think that there's some people who are really lucky and they find it and it it, yeah. it works you it know sticks, right um I also joke that I say like most people are screwed up screwed up because I come from a broken home I'm screwed up because I come from a good home like my dad is just the fucking best mm -hmm. and you know, just what he, he, like, just so many, so this, the, the standard and like something as little as not even just my dad, but like my aunts, my aunt, my uncle, mm -hmm. and even like my grandpa, like, I remember when I was a teenager, I was 13 and 14 and my Grammy, my mom's mom was dying of cancer and moved in with us. And like my dad and my uncle, the way they took care of her and that's yeah. their mother-in-law. Yeah. Like that's so impressionable for a 13 year old to see yep. and just how, how, what a, what a, it, the relationships of like the marriage that I was exposed to were so equal yeah. and, and just like so progressive mm -hmm. at that time yeah. that I'm like, you guys fuck me up. Like yeah. this, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's amazing that I had that experience and that I saw it, but I also like, I have such high standards and like, I know that that's not a bad thing, mm -mm. but at the same time, I'm like, man, like, but my brother, like seeing my brother as a dad, he's mm -hmm. so present and like yeah. so like he's obsessed with drew and he just like the, you know he's always looking up um you know things online and like what could i do different and like reading books and like so he like so it worked nice. right because he saw yeah. my dad mm -hmm. um so i'm like i know he's out there somewhere just <laughs> <laughs> no you're you're i mean you're more optimistic i i'm not i wouldn't say i'm cynical as much anymore but i also think once i turned in my 40s i started to realize that wasn't a priority um, yeah, I kind of like being slightly delusional and being obsessed with Eagle players like Dallas Goddard is my husband in my mind. Oh, that's funny. Not okay. reality, but he's a hottie to me in a, in a, in a, in a very different way. I, I get, um, no, no, I get, uh, I hate his hair. I do. I hate his hair. It's so I want funny to cut it. Natalie I, wait, Natalie, we're going to have to talk about this podcast. I'm going to text her after this, but like we were last night, she was talking about this guy that she dated like years ago who I knew. And I was like, Oh God, he was such a, <laughs> like right away she's like but he's so hot I was like he's such a shyster I was like you could see it in his eyes and he was like he was just like shady and she's like oh he was I was like yeah like I think it's like a Leo thing where like yeah. I'm just always like hmm you know you what I mean just I see, like, yeah I could just see and yep. and um she's always like uh she always like like the bad boys and I'm the opposite where like I always like liked the Hallmark guys right yeah and, yeah and, like, the clean cut like right and so the funny thing is about like dallas that's why i like zach Ertz. like i like a guy with swagger i like but both also of them. Is, yeah that's also but like zach Ertz isn't his personality is a little 
too bland. He's, like, he's need... very, he's very like, yeah, monotone. But yeah. there's something about Dallas because I think he's kind of new on the scene that I still don't know. And I think I like that. But normally, oh, yeah. you'll ask my bestie. She's like, all she likes is the clean cut. Duh, duh, duh. And I'm like, I'm starting to veer away from it because I realize it's kind of a lie. <laughs> like, I realize right. they're not probably perfect. Perfect, but... right. I like Dallas because I don't know a lot about him. And then the fact that I finally got a chance to do a Zoom chat with him through the Autism Foundation, finally. Um, and he was cool. He was cool. He just seems really country, like laid back, like chill, yeah. South Dakota dude. And, you know, I don't know. And I like his height, I guess. I, I'm always attracted yeah. to tight ends because I think they have a nice build. It is weird. I, I think I tweeted that one time, like, why are all tight ends so hot, right? Yeah. Like I'm yeah, telling you, like, girl. It's weird. I did I a podcast it. just for that because I said I have a thing with tight ends and I don't know why. I've loved yeah, it since LJ Smith days. But I think for me, like, it's so funny because I love the clean cut, but I need, like, this is why, like, I'm obsessed with JJ Reddick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I like, understand. He's, but, like, he has a bit, like, it's like the tattoo, like, he has a bit of an edge. And then he's, like, a social justice warrior, he right? Is. It's yeah. like, I need them to have, like, a swag and also, like, have a voice and be like a good person and be right. funny. It's like same thing with Chris Long. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Like, oh God. It's like oh. they're I mean Chris Long and JJ Reddick are basically like the same person. Woo! Just Chris like, Long is ridiculous. Like ridiculous. Uh, ridiculous. And, I listen to his pod all the time. I'm like, he is sexy even when he's not trying. That's what's oh a hundred percent. And it's so funny because I'm we had him on the pod because I'm friends with his right. brother in law. Yep. And and I was and Matt's gay and I'm like I was like, how hard is that to yeah. have him? him as your brother? Are you like, uh, you know what I mean? He's like, <laughs> he's like, I mean, you get at, you, you get all, like, you get out of it. But I was like, he's like, yeah, I mean, he's hot. Like, and I was like, yes, right, so. he's attractive. Even when he tries to act like he, he tries to be so self-deprecating. But every time I see him, I'm like, Chris, you're just hot without even trying. Jesus Lord. I know. But, but anyway, I've always been an old, like, I've always been a fangirl. Like, it's just my personality, which is why I think I love entertainment and sports. Because even yep. from when I was little, like, I was obsessed with Jordan Knight. And then I was obsessed with Nick Carter. And I was obsessed with Justin Timberlake. And Justin you know what I mean? I like I'm obsessed with Harry Styles. Like yep. I, I just I and I've, there's been athletes in between, other people sprinkled between that. Like love Chris Evans, right? Yeah. Like, um, they're all the same. It's all like kind it of it's, in the it's, same it's, type. I, yeah, it's always same type. It's like tall, like clean cut, little bit of swag, and mm -hmm. also like trying to change the world in a positive way. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. And then that, and then my cynicism sneaks in, Nick, because after 40, you just start seeing through the bullshit. And I just right. started realizing, I'm like, they all say the same thing, but you don't really know them. They could be crazy. They could be serial True. killers. You just True. don't know. But that's why I say I love the delusion right now, because mentally, I'm not ready to commit to even trying to date right now, because it just stresses oh. me. You know, I mean, it's so funny because it's like, I'll go on Bumble, I'll go on Hinge. And it's like, you swipe, you swipe. And you're like, the picture's like, first of all, if they don't smile in a photo, forget it. Like that to me is a Same. red flag, right? So they're like, <laughs> you know, with like just a fake. Like, I'm like, please stop. Yeah. And then you find one and like you scroll down and it says conservative. And it's like, eh. and like <laughs> one of my best friends, Diane, who's married, she's like, let me just swipe for you. And she's like, Ooh, you <laughs> aren't lying. I'm, like, I'm not lying. It's right. I was like, this is terrible. The pictures are blurry. They're weird. They just look strange. They're what they say in their things are strange. I'm like, if I have my shit together, like I'm not going to just, I'm not going to take my time and get dressed up and go for drinks on a Tuesday night. Right. And, and he like, he, he looks creepy. Like yeah. I'm not doing it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, Acts I, are I the just, devil. It's just, it's so crazy. And it's like, in she's like, Ooh, these, this even says moderate. You can't be with a moderate. I go, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> moderate means you know and i like literally wrote in my profile it was like one i think it was hinge and it said uh don't date me if and i wrote one you wait to turn on the air conditioning and two if you voted for trump like i'm, just, <laughs> I'm not even like trying to ha like yes! read my pro like moderate means like well that's like it's like no <laughs> Moderate means like you hated Hillary Clinton and like you like thinks Trump's not that bad. So basically, like, nah. basically, you can't yeah. make a decision is what it's basically what it means. But oh, exactly. I was like, no, but... next. All right. Well, let me go to this question because I wanted to ask you this as a female, because at this point now, it's kind of obvious, especially starting to listen to uh, the Lipstick League. I know that you and Natalie have discussed this. Um, but as a woman in radio, what do you feel is the best part of being a woman in your field? And what do you feel is the worst? So the best part is definitely that so many state, so many stations, especially music formats, are female-driven stations. Mm -hmm. So the way that radio works is that there's a there's a demo, right? So like in top forty, the demo is females eighteen to thirty-four. Hot AC is females twenty-five to fifty-four. Country is females twenty-five to fifty-four. Uh, no, sports is men. So sports is men usually like eighteen to forty-nine. Right. Rock is men. 
twenty-five fifty-four. And then you have some stations where it's persons like Radio One Hundred Four. It's Alt One Hundred Four Five now. They do like persons eighteen to thirty-four. But like WDAS is even though it ha- it's very male, it's still women twenty-five fifty-four, right? Mm-hmm. And so for so long, again, it's like I'm, I don't want to bash all old white men because there's are some really good ones. However, it is a factor. The, re- <laughs> the reality is, is that they were the ones that made all the decisions. Like that's I think what what we just have to like address like this the whole country was founded on like rich white men and for sent until social media really Mm -hmm. i mean every decision that was made in business Mm -hmm. was rich white men sitting in a conference room they're Mm -hmm. the ones that right so like radio and just entertainment in general it was this is what it was so the thing about it is is that these radio stations were very much female leaning radio stations but every decision was made by men right Mm -hmm. and so in, 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 in a, a long, for a long, long, long time, you know, I'm mean, listen, inter- internalized misogyny still very much exists. Right. Yeah. But like, when you, when you look at radio and how, like, it used to be like, it was all men who were on air. And then the women were like the laugh boxes. And when they would do, I mean, there's a ton of research that's done behind the scenes in radio and in and, and, and anything, there's a ton of research. Right. And, um, when like women didn't want to hear other women, because like, that's how like your brain was trained. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like it was like almost like this, you had this jealousy, but like it's the internalized misogyny that was the jealousy, right? And so it's against each but, other. <laughs> correct. Yeah. But as because because again, like there's only a very short or, or small pool of women. So it's like, well, if she gets there, I'm very scared to bring another woman on because that mm. means that there's only one spot. So if it's not me and it's her, that means I'm gone. Right. So yeah. Yeah. it's, it's when, when, when you hear like the stories of like women are mean to each other, they're mean to each other because they're scared. They're going to lose their spot. Lose their spot right? And it's like, men don't have to think about that. Men right. never worry about losing their spot. There's, there's, there's so many men walking around in positions of power that they never have to worry about that. Where women, there's like, wait, there's seven men and one of me and so if i bring another woman on where's where where do i go especially right? if she's so younger like, and hotter or whatever totally yeah. totally mm-hmm. and so but as time went on and as social media went on i always say people give social media a really bad rap but to me social media has given everybody a voice mm-hmm. everybody gets a voice with social media which yeah in a lot of ways it's a bad thing but also in a lot of ways it's a great thing, thing. Yeah. that people are like hey i'm beautiful and mm-hmm. i'm smart and i'm successful and i matter yeah. right and i'm not alone that's another thing too it's like you know you you can connect with people so you don't feel alone and then you realize oh there's actually millions of me out there that's yeah. that's a very powerful thing and so as as society has changed and, and women are like, oh, we're not going to hate each other anymore. We're going to use our voice. Radio and entertainment has changed, right? Like I look at the Today Show and I say this, the, the problem with radio, which makes me crazy is because I think radio is still so powerful. And I yep. think that it doesn't get the respect it deserves. Like in, just even the other night, it was Friday. One of my friends was... It, She's a casual friend, but she used to be one of my trainers at the gym. Mm-hmm. So she has three boys. She has twins who are six and then a little boy who's four. And they, she's like texting me and she's like, oh my God, I'm listening. Any, t- any chance you could give them a shout out? And so I did this whole shout out about Ritz, Kip and Davis. And they're in the car and Anne-Marie and hope Santa's good to you. And like, she recorded the reaction and they were like freaking out. And I was like, yes, like, this is what I mean. Like radio's live local radio yeah. is still so powerful. But it's like, it's getting less and less, you know, it's syndication, it's voice tracking in other markets. And I'm like, this connection to where you live, right? However, they're behind because you have the Today Show that has had Savannah and Hoda as the hosts, Mm -hmm. you know, for the past five or six years, ever since the, and and they're killing it. They're the number one show. You have the view that's been on for over 20 years. You have the talk, right? Yeah. You never see in radio two women hosting a morning show. You don't see it. Sure. Now, XTU, which is amazing. We have a female lead on the morning show with the Andy Summer Show. Then there's Charlie who does middays and me who do afternoon. We have three full-time women. It's so, it's so rare to see that on a station. In fact, I could probably pull 30 stations and you might have one or two full-time women. Mm-hmm. And, and Or they're shared. Like on Q102, like Rach does middays, but Bex shares afternoons with Buster. True. And it's like, she should be doing that herself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. You're right. You know, and she's a friend of mine. I love her. And so I think, um, I think the best part about it, like going back to your initial question is that we get to connect with women. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's, I don't alienate men because obviously we have a lot of male listeners, but I try to like teach the men. So for instance, 
um, I'm doing this promotion these two weeks called 10 days with Jolly St. Nick, which mm. is me. <laughs> and so it's like a bunch of prizes and people call in and then I like randomly pick a, a prize. And um, this, so this guy called and he won. And so he won a diamond necklace for his wife. And I said, did you get her a present? And he said, no, not yet. And I was like, okay, well now's your present. I was like, but you, know, you need to get her something else. Right, right. So you need to get her flowers or something. And then as he's like, you know, okay. And then I go, as I like wrapped up the call, I said, now men, this is a reminder go get your wife a Christmas present, go get your wife a Christmas present from your children. Mm -hmm. Like, so I, so I try, like, my thing is like, I want to empower women, you know? Right. And like the one time I had, I do this, this thing called the guessing game and this woman calls and she's like, Oh my God, I'm so dumb. I go, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. Yeah. Stop saying we that. do not, we do not call ourselves names on the Nicole show. Mm -hmm. I was like, we're not. And she's like laughing. I go, okay. I want you to be like, I'm smart and beautiful. And she's like laughing. I was like, say it. And she's like, no, say it I'm smart and beautiful. And she's like, Oh, you know what I'm, And so I think that like the being live and local on the radio and being able to connect with women in the Delaware Valley and just being like, don't hate, like women have hated ourselves for way too long, like way too yeah. long. And I'm yeah. sick of it. Like even like friends of mine now who are like, one of my best friends was like going to this, this Christmas party. And she was like, so stressed about what she was going to wear and her, and she's fucking gorgeous. And yeah. she's, I was like, you're a milf, like, come on. <laughs> but I was like, women we've like, we've hated ourselves for way too long. So I love that. Like, it is so women centric. And the fact that like, we're getting to a place now where women are about self-love and, and empowerment. And exactly. I get to kind of help with that. Yes. The, the, the hard part about being a woman in the business is that like, we still don't have enough power. Right. And I mean, that's just the reality of it is that there's just still not enough women in positions of power who get to make the decisions. Mm -hmm. And, and I've been very, let me, let me say this. I've been very, very, very fortunate to work with some amazing men. Right. And I, majority of my bosses in this business have been men. Obviously it's worked out because I wouldn't have the positions that I had have had. Right. However, there's been people that I've, that have worked with really horrible, horrible people. Right. So like when I talk about my boss now, Raz, he's amazing. He's amazing. You know, and my, my one boss, Tim, who hired me full time at, at Q102 years ago, like he's all right. So, um, but I still think that like in, in regards to, the, the power there's just not enough women in positions of power there's just not and that's just that's just the reality of it and because again like it's not just about being in a position of power it's about being in a position of power and knowing that you're going to put other women it's like that that meme where it's like um my company's diverse and then you see it and it's like white guy white guy white guy black woman asian man white guy white guy white guy you know right, what i mean and right, it's like right. no having one or two people like right and so i think that that's so so important to be like it's not just about having like a woman it's about having many women in a position of power who are the ones that are actually making the decisions especially and even like i said it to an old coworker. um i was like have you have you been on tiktok at all like have, have you seen what a 21 year old like you just need to hang out on tiktok for like 15 minutes to see like what a 21 year old in 2022 yeah. wants. And I'm telling you right now, like, it's not this. Yeah. 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 So like what you think a 21 year old, like you're a 47 year old white male. And I'm telling you right now, like you're her enemy. So hmm. figure out a way to like tap in to like what she's thinking and how she's feeling and like what she wants. And so that's what I worry about radio in a lot of ways. Cause I'm like, Anytime I get a winner that's under 30, I pick their brain. I'm like, why did you listen to the radio? How else do you consume music? Like, right. Because to me, I'm like, I, I get so frustrated because I was like, radio is still so people love where they live. Right. People want to be connected to their city. Right. People want to win meet and greets, right. People want to feel good. And I was like, we can't lose that, but we right. also like have to, and I know I'm going on a tangent here, but like just a really, really quick example. So like before reality TV and before social media, people used to get their drama on the radio. Like you remember she yes. wore the roses and yes. the dad, dad patrol, right? <laughs> yes. Like people, all the prank phone calls, like people love that. Right. Yeah. But once reality TV became real and once social media became so popular, people didn't want the drama on the radio on anymore. Radio, yeah, they yeah. wanted to get in their car. Right. And think about, think about how times had changed. Right. So it's like when, social media and when reality TV, it all came with like the Blackberry and the iPhone. So like 
people used to get in their car and they weren't getting emails from work or phone calls from work. They would get in their car and they would listen to the radio and they would mm-hmm. drive to work. Well, now all of a sudden, like your emails on your phone right. and you're doing a conference call as you're in the car. Right. And so like people are way more stressed now. So they, so the, what they want from radio is they want to feel good. They want to feel happy. They want right. to laugh. Right. And that was another big issue was that like these old school mentality, like couldn't get that out of their head. And mm-hmm. I just feel like, radio like just it it just took too long to like they didn't they didn't uh, they didn't go with the change fast enough yeah, you know what right. i mean you're right i hear and you now saying. it's like oh well what do we do with radio and it's like it's still you have to like put some effort into it and i just think that i get frustrated because i'm like god there's just still so much that we could be doing yeah and you know so Anyway. Absolutely. No, but you're right. Person. Because no, because at this point now, like, that's why I'm saying I don't really listen to radio other than sports radio, because mm-hmm. I find myself because of just exactly what you said. I find myself more interested in talk, listening to sports radio talk and debates than mm-hmm. listening to the, the stuff that I used to listen to when I was listening to Kuno Tour, or when I was listening right. to AS, you know, if I do listen to the radio now, it's really just like right now for holiday music or right. I listen for occasionally if I get lost in like somebody's doing 80s, like back to back and I'm like oh god I love this stuff but most of the time I'm listening to podcasts I'm listening to meditation stuff um most of the time it's honestly podcasts all the time especially now that everyone's on YouTube and stuff that's why I'm doing mine so I've gotten to the point where you're you're right that connection has 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 needs to be more progressive and you're right personalities like yourself need to put that out there and that's the beauty of social media because you can use it to educate and inspire and um yeah, make people look in a progressive view because honestly, let's look at it this way. Social media and the internet has made everybody realize how limited they've been in their thinking, you know? Yeah, oh my God, that's, I I can never articulate it, but that's exactly, (laughs) the thing, even stuff that I've learned, right? Like that I I see on, on, on social media or on TikTok, and I'm like, how did I never think of that before? Right. Like, how did, you know, and then I see it and I was like, and then, but then I get mad because I'm yes. like, oh my, like, <laughs> I, know, I feel like I'm so behind. Why did I yeah, know that? And yeah. I'm just like, oh, and I just say like, that's why like, I'm so obsessed with activists because like they dedicate their lives for the change, Yep. you know, and like kind of what we're seeing now, people have been fighting for, for 20, 30 years. Yeah. And I'm yeah. just like, I just want every activist to know how much I love and respect them. You know, like they're you know, working at a coffee shop during the day so they could like make posters and start petitions and, and, you know, and, and do, um, protests. And I'm just like, God, you're amazing. And like, that's what makes the world go around, right? Like there's scientists and there's activists and there's teachers and there's entertainers. Cause sometimes I get down on myself because I'm like, Oh God, like all I do is like, I'm just like on the radio and I just feel like I need to like change the world. And then I'm like, but God gave me these gifts to be entertaining and people Mm -hmm. need a break. So people need to be entertained. Like you like life because, I mean, one of the parts about social media is like, it is a minute by minute news cycle and it could be really depressing. And so people need the escape to laugh and dance and listen to music and win prizes. Like that's really important for people's mental health. And to get off of it, because I know for me, I am addicted and I have to find my my quit times because I have to tell myself, I'm like, I can't be on, because thank God your phones now tell you how long you've been on a certain app. Because then I'm like, I need to get a life. Like, why am I on Instagram for six hours? You know what I mean? So, but you're right. I mean, that's exactly why I say it's been helpful. I have friends, shout out to my friend Evan, who's been a lifelong activist. He's always protesting the pipeline. He's like in Chicago and he's married now, but I always worry about him because I know he's probably been arrested more than once. (laughs) But I know he's there. He's not just like what people used to call me online is that a social media activist. I'm like, whatever. The point is, I'm, I'm, I'm alerting the people who I know will not get off their butts and do it. I'm not a marching person. I have gone to certain marches, but I can't say I'm an active activist, but I know yeah. I'm down for the cause, especially if I can just donate because there's a lot of startup groups who really need that help. And totally. terms of revenue in order to be relevant, you know, in a year. Well, from- and, and exactly. And that's really important too, is that there was a really great, um, post a couple years ago, it's probably like two, it may have be even been before the pandemic where it talked about like, thank, thank you for the person who wants to clean oceans. And thank you for the person who believes, um, women deserve equal pay. And thank you for the women who are voting for equal rights. And thank you for those who are, um, working on, you know, social justice reform. And basically it was like, there's so many causes, so many. right? Yeah. And like, I have one of my friends is like obsessed with the SPCA and she like loves to, you know, help at shelters. And I'm like, yep. I mean, I love to pet a dog, but like, that's not where, that's not where my, where right. gets me. Right? right. Like for me more, it's, it's, 
I have other causes that I'm more, way more passionate about, but I was like, yeah, again, it's what makes the world go round. And there's people also realize like there's people who march, but then there's people that have extra money that they could donate and they're equally as important. Right. Because like you said, like th- at the end of the day, like money is, that's just how every, everything, everything works. is about yeah. money. Yep. So if you, if you have this organization that you believe in and you have, those are the people that are boots in the ground, but they need money. Donations are amazing too. So it's okay yeah. to donate and not necessarily like be marching, marching and it's free right. Mar- right. If you don't have the money to donate. So it's like, as long as you're just doing, I just think that like, as long as you're doing something positive and you're, you're doing something that's like helping the change of, Mm -hmm. of progress and making people, cause that's always my thing. I'm like, it's, it's to help people who have never had the chance to do things in whatever way. So it's, you know, and it's, it. a, and it's important to be an, a supporter, but not somebody also that feels the need to announce it too. You don't have to always announce everything you're right. doing because right. I mean, I hate to go back to the Bible, but that's really what it, that principle about is like your right hand should know what the left hand is doing because right. the whole point of it is you're, you're there to uplift them, period. And that's it. Period. Like, you don't have to be, I did this, I did that, you don't. A thousand you know. percent. Yeah. So there's a lot of local charities I would rather support. And I, for one, am in, uh, I per- if I had charities, I would always want to give to um, the arts and I would always want to give to mental health because I feel like I've always struggled with my self-esteem and mental health and stuff for years. And so that's important to me. And I would also be, uh, remiss to, a miss to say like remiss, that's the word remiss to speak about people with arts because they want to take those programs away so quickly. And I think that's yes. what helps kids brains move when they don't know that's- how else to relate to people. Yes. So why would you want to cancel the arts? You know what I mean? The arts yeah. is what makes to me contributes to making the world go round. But anyway, yeah. I digress. But um, I also wanted to ask, since you did bring up uh, The Biggest Loser, if you had a chance, since you did tell, and, and check out Lipstick Lee for all those who are watching this, because she gives a Thank great you. breakdown of The Biggest Loser as, as she was a contestant. If you had a chance to be on a reality show today, what reality show would you want to be a part of? It has to be current. It Whatever. Has to be like, Whatever, within the last, like, I guess, because I, I don't really watch anything like I used to anymore, but like five, 10 years, maybe. You know, what's really weird is that, like, I've never been, um, I don't really watch reality TV. Yeah. Um, And which is like strange, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Once you're in it, don't you feel like you don't like want to be a part of it anymore? <laughs> well, OK, so this is what's so interesting about The Biggest Loser is that now 14 years later like there was actually just another article in the new york times that came out about how it like fucked us fucked our bodies up and just like just like weight in general and how like body diversity is real and like my doctor says all the time like we need to be obsessed with health and not weight people in this country are obsessed with weight we need to be obsessed with health yeah and we're not it's like we're eating fat-free cheese because you want to be skinny but that's horrible for you you know yeah um and so the biggest loser was so crazy in so many ways just because but they didn't know like they were doing what they knew then right so it's like at that point you were like don't eat and exercise eight hours a day because that's how you lose weight right Right. that's like what you know what i mean and it was like have no calorie jello right because that's what like you thought was like what to do right but excuse me it goes back to what you're saying about progress like that's why that's why progress is beautiful because it's you that's why science is beautiful is because like you learn and you and you do studies and you know that's why in people who are um in college and who constantly like dedicate their life's work to to learning more things is amazing on the flip side i loved being on the biggest loser it was so fucking fun you know what i mean like i'm still really good friends with my friend holly and we talk about all the time we're like wow it really was horrible in so many ways but we loved it like it was (laughs) great like yeah it was an experience yeah we lived in LA we were on TV we met these amazing people like it was the it was so fun yeah um and so like if I I would if I would the reality show I'd be on like I would be on um I don't know like I mean, I guess I would do the housewives just because if I had the opportunity where I was like this multimillionaire, but like, I wouldn't want to, I'm not drama. Right. And like, that's, what's really interesting about the biggest loser. Like if you watch my episodes for the first couple, for the first couple episodes, like I look like this, like weird mute that cries. Um, (laughs) And my friends would be like, what's wrong? It's because you didn't give enough drama. I didn't give enough drama because like, I just am not. I, my personality is like, I really do love people. Like I know right. people, I like pets more than people. I actually love people. Right. And so I, 
you know, just am very friendly. And like, I just loved being there and it was like so fun. And, yep. and so I wasn't, and the thing is, is like, I was, now they make you, and again, if you listen to the whole episode, I break it all down, but like, they make you take this, you know, I think like two super, super, super intense personality tests and meet with a psychiatrist. So mm-hmm. like, they know the personalities that they're putting together when they right. ask you. Right. I'm not, the, the, you know, the part of reality shows, especially competition shows, you got to be a game player and I'm right. not. Yeah. Right. I'm just like, I'm not here to win. I just want to lose weight and then like make friends. <laughs> and that was true. Like, yeah, I didn't even think I was like, oh, you could like win money. Like <laughs> that wasn't why I went on the show. I went on right. the show because it was I wanted to lose weight and be on TV. It right. wasn't. But there's other people there that was like for the money. Right. So right. it's just interesting people's personalities. And it wasn't until more people got voted off. And then like, you really started to see my personality. Yeah. But like, I'm silly. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'm fu- and I am competitive. Like, I'm competitive when I'm good at something. So when I know that I'm good at something, like, so my career I'm competitive in because I'm like, I know I'm good at my job, but like, I'm not fast. So like, I'm not going to try to like win a 5k, right? Hey, (laughs) you win. (laughs) Right. So like, I'm only competitive. I'm only type a with things that I'm with things that I'm good at. And, um, and so when it came to the biggest loser, like I, just was like, I just want to like kind of make it to the end and yeah. like just kind of lose weight and just be on TV and like have fun and you yeah. know, and so um it is it's just kind of funny how it so I think with like the housewives, like I think if I could be on a reality show, it wouldn't be a competition show. That is yeah. kind of my point. I, because yeah. that's just like I'm not going to Survivor and like wearing a leaf bathing suit, <laughs> like no, no desire, like. Yeah. Like I I'll camp for two nights. Like I like right. to get dirty. Like I've done mud runs. Like I'm not mm. afraid to be like dirty, but like, I also like have no desire to like, like live with like mosquitoes for, you know, six weeks. Girl, please. The, yeah. the bachelor and bachelorette. I mean, I would never be on the bachelor because like, I'm not competing nope. for a guy on the girls. Nope. I maybe would do the bachelorette. Um, but like, I would have to have control. Like I would yeah. have to be like, I would want it to be inclusive. Like, that's the thing. The fact that they, you know, ever it's still the same formula. Yeah, like that's why I hate it. Five year old. She's a hundred pounds. Like the whole thing. <laughs> well, I hate it. I hate that show. I feel right. like it it's messes just, with girls minds so much. And you know, like, it's so funny talking about like, kind of go back to the beginning of the episode. We're talking about my dad. My dad, like, is like, I can't believe that women would do this to themselves. Like, well, like he gets like so worked up about yeah. it. Cause it's so right. Yeah. And so, um, I do think though, like, bachelor bachelorette now people go on it to be instagram famous like it's not about re- right like it's before, not about it really was maybe about like i want him to choose me and love me but now it's kind of like i'm gonna get a million instagram followers and have a um bathing suit line and then mm-hmm. i'll like you know get paid to sell slim tea you know mm-hmm. what i mean like mm-hmm. um and so yeah but like i guess my point is is like if i went on a show it would have to like i would just i would be myself in a lot of ways like yes. i wouldn't want to be like forced to be part of like the drama um, of it, but also like people like the drama. I so, I, I like Beverly Hills out of all of them the most, and I, I was I, I don't watch them. I see, yeah, and I only watched it because I liked Kyle because I thought she was the most. I always like the chill people. I don't like the people yes. who are high drama, and so right. Kyle. She being a child star, she was the most chill out of the Beverly Hills crew, but I've lost touch since. Like, I've lost interest right. with all that stuff with podcasts kind of blowing up. So it's like, yeah, or or to me, my dream was, and I have auditioned for American Idol, but I never got on to the screen. Okay. But I know a friend who did, um, who I used to work with at FYE a long time ago, and she never got past getting uh, criticized and then never made the top 10, but she should have because she can sing, but whatever. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. I'm not a competitive person by nature. So it's so funny you say that. I'm like, I'd be one of those people that just want to be cute and pretty and be on TV and I don't want to do shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't make yeah. me and jump. Like, don't I make can't, me run. I also like can't sing. Um, so like that would be out. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like super tone deaf, which I'm like, I think I work in radio because like I love music. And it's weird because like I have rhythm. Like yeah. I can dance. Yeah. Um, but I can't sing. Like it, it, to the point where people are like, <laughs> Why are what you is radio this? station? <laughs> I was like, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And uh, you, so yeah. it would never be that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would never like scoff at the idea. Like if, if an opportunity presented itself and it felt like it was a good fit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I definitely would advocate for myself now more. You know what I mean? Like when I was in The Biggest Loser, I was so young and I was just like so grateful to get this opportunity. I mean, right. it was, it was. The thing that's really crazy, though, really quick about The Biggest Loser is my friend Holly and I talk about it a lot, is that we try not to, like, dwell on it because it can make us crazy. But, I mean, we were 
the highest rated show on television on Tuesday nights. We were eight o'clock NBC Perfect. Tuesday nights for two hours. This was yeah. before, like, I didn't even have a Facebook until I came off the show. Right. So we were, we were the bachelor and bachelorette mm-hmm. in 2007. Mm-hmm. And we're like, we were just, you know, if we were, a, if we were a decade later, our whole lives would have been about like, we would have had a million followers on Instagram yeah. and like been able to have, you know, a workout line right. and like, right. you can't dwell on it. Cause it will make you so mad to be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. wow, like this is crazy. But when you really think, I mean, it was before like streaming, like no one was watching Netflix or Hulu or Amazon prime in 2007. Right. Like we, it was such a massive, massive show. Right. And we're like, wow, we really got the short end of the stick with that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> my like, mom watched those shows she used to watch that and she still loves uh naked and afraid i don't know why my mom okay. still likes to watch naked and afraid but That's so funny i i can't get into it and then she's Either. like because she's from west virginia she loves watching the alaskan bush people or whatever so that's her thing that's uh, funny can't. anyway so moving on to um my second to last question what do you prefer to watch more in the sports world are you more of a football hockey basketball or baseball person and why football by far yeah. i mean like football's here yeah. And then it would be like basketball, basketball, baseball, hockey. Yeah. Same. Um, same. And I don't know why a part of me, well, it's weird because my dad and my brother are both basketball coaches. My dad mm-hmm. coached for years. I was his ball girl. Like I grew up, I mean, just living and breathing basketball. Um, but also football was really, really big for where I grew up. You know, we were like a little bit of a Friday night lights type of type of school. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and so I don't know. I just always love like, I will like last night I watched the Colts Patriots game. So there's a lot of times where like, I watch a lot of games that aren't even the Eagles. Yeah. Um, where like, it's pretty rare for me to watch a basketball game. That isn't the Sixers. Same. I can't, I'm yeah, not interested when it's not. Right. Sixers. And yeah. even, and, and definitely like baseball. I mean, that's a whole other podcast just about baseball and how, you know, they just did a horrible job marketing itself and no one know. I was getting railed on Twitter the one day because I was like fighting with, you know, annoying men, but, um, yeah, like yeah. the average person does not know anybody who plays baseball. And that was kind of my argument. It's like, mm-hmm. if I took a picture of Bryce Harper and like walked to target and been like, who is this? They're me. If I asked 10 people, three of them might be able to say, Oh, that's Bryce Harper. Right. Right. And like, it's, and this is in Philly, but like, right. if you go to, indiana and show them a picture of manny machado they're not going to know who that is right even if i even if i walked to target and showed a lady a picture of mike trout if i picked up a random 50 year old woman and was like who is this it would be very rare for her to be like oh that's mike trout right right who does he play for you know what i mean right, like you're right and he's arguably going to be one of the best baseball players of all time not just like right. now of all right. time and so that's like a whole other conversation. And it's, again, it's very weird. My dad was, a, is a massive baseball fan, like obsessed with the St. Louis Cardinals. Like we used to go to the games and the Cardinals play the Phillies all the time. And so in my world growing up, it was always like basketball, baseball. And then like football was here with my dad and my, my uncles and stuff. But mm-hmm. for me, football's way, way higher, yeah. which I like, I can't figure out why that is, but like, I just, I just love football so much. It's so a more, more exciting spectator sport. That's why. Yeah. And you feel like you're involved every time you, especially if you're at the games, you know, I just went yeah. to my first game since I stopped. I used to work at the link as an event staffer and me and my sister went and uh, it was really exciting to be there, but I have to say, I'm like, had we won, I, I don't know, I don't know how I would have acted because I was already hyped just being there, and they weren't doing that great. And they weren't right, right. Yeah. It was against the Chiefs. It was that game. Like my sister was like, "What is oh, going yeah. on with the defense?" And I was just oh. like, "I couldn't tell you, girl." But it was fun. I it was know. a nice sister bonding exercise. But you're right, baseball. Like only reason I know Bryce Harper is because I'm on social media and because yeah. I knew that every time the Phillies played the Nationals, he was kind of a jerk at the time. Yeah, now, right. Like, you know now we love him but it's weird because the one time i went for my friend's get together we went to soraya to eat which is a great restaurant by the way mm, mm. and yes i love such good food and i so literally good. saw him walk in when we decided to sit in the back and just look at the how pretty it was in the back and he came in and of course none of my friends who are artists don't really right. know anything so i'm sitting there going oh my god this is bryce harper and my friends did like, anybody oh. else know who he is nope no, right. my friends are tone deaf when it comes to sports, especially my bestie. No, 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 but like other people in the restaurant. Like, did you oh, see no, the uh, just the person who was helping them. Like it was, yeah, there was somebody with him and then they were sitting down. He had the stroller, uh, I guess, I guess with crew at the time. I don't know if it was the new baby and then yeah. his wife. And then I thought only I am the only person who knows who he is. And it seems like if anybody else did, they didn't really 
draw attention to yeah. it. So, yeah, but you're right. I mean, I'm sitting there going, oh, my God. And it's like I didn't have the urge like I do if it was an Eagles player to go, like, introduce myself. Yeah. But I was, like, secretly like, damn, I wish I could get a picture real quick just to say hi. But, yeah, I left him alone. And so I'm, no one no one went up to him or anything? No. From what I saw, no. Wow. Maybe somebody who went to the bar there I think maybe might have nodded at his way but didn't really. Yeah. You well, know, was no, when like, I was oh, at – um. Cool the was i was it the luke bryan concert it was one of the country shows i think it was luke bryan um mm-hmm. this summer and it was and i was we were in the vip area and it's which is just like this little like box and it's it's so it's not like you get like a wristband and you just kind of hang out it's not yeah, like there's yeah. like a line or anything there's like a bar back there and um i was like oh that's zach eflin and my friends who were like into sports they were like oh and then all of a sudden it's like oh no oh there's Reese Hoskins. Oh, there's JT Real Muto. Mm-hmm. And like, none of them knew who they were. Like none of them knew they were all there. And then, um, my, the, there was, so we let my, my friend's friend asked for a picture. I was like, I'm not, I'm not asking for a picture, <laughs> but, um, Smart. my friend's friend asked for a picture and they were cool. But then there was like this little kid who went to Zach. I mean, went to JT Real Muto and I asked for a picture. And he, Go ahead. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> are you freaking kidding? I was so pissed. I was yeah. like, you suck. Yeah, yeah, I know. When they blow people off, I, I sort of understand, you but then I sort of you do. are. I, yeah, I know. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, there's a way you can handle it. I just actually, before we started, I was I just seen a video of Jay Z uh, coming out of a hotel, and you know the guy was like, "My kid has a show," and he was just like, "He was like, I can't talk right now," or something like that. And I just thought to myself, I'm like, I wouldn't even take offense because I'm like, how long have y'all been standing outside the hotel? You yeah. know what I mean? But I agree with you. I mean, I don't think it shouldn't kill you just for that one moment. It'd be different especially if there were 15 for, kids in line, but just one. Exactly. Kid. Especially for a kid. And I just feel like it's one thing if you're like sitting down at a restaurant or like if you're in a hurry or if you're right. I don't know. It was like you're you play for the Phillies. Like <laughs> no one knows who you are. I like want anything yet. <laughs> yeah. Like you're just you're not. You know what I mean? Like you're just i agree with you though i would be i would be salty too like, like you don't be a, and it was a kid yeah yeah you know? yeah yeah it wasn't like a girl pushing up on you it was like a little yeah. sweetie kid yeah i agree with you but also moving on i want to also discuss uh since we are now at the end of this year and it seems like we're probably going through another year of the pandemic or yep. the, the panorama as I, <laughs> mandy says from see the thing is pod but um how have you adjusted health wise? And obviously you told me recently you just went through a bout with yeah. COVID. How have you amped up and or maybe stayed the same with your health regime considering you've been through COVID, if not even before you had COVID? Have you like amped up things like supplements? Have you exercised more? What did you do different? Um, yeah, so I've always been like pretty into vitamins and supplements and stuff and just like you know, every morning I always do like a green smoothie with mm-hmm. protein and you know, I'll do like spinach and, and frozen zucchini, which is a, which is an amazing little tidbit. So you get zucchini, you cut it up and then you freeze it and use that as your ice cubes mm. and you can't taste it. Good it's tip. really good. Okay. Um, and I always take like a multivitamin, vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc is mm-hmm. like my normal. Um, my mom gets told me about zinc. I just took some. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I was, I was like very, cause I was in work every day during the height of the pen, like from, you know, when everything shut down in March of 2020, Um, and no one was, we were, I was still going into work every day, which again was amazing because one, no one else was out and about. So, you know, I would like walk the streets and it would just be like me. Oh God, it was. Yeah. And then you'd see like one cop and you'd be like, Hey, (laughs) I'm at work too. I'm going to work too. You know? (laughs) Um, and, uh, and so, but it was amazing because like healthcare workers were going in. So they would like call nurses would call me on their way home from a shift. And it was just like, right. Yeah. And it was only just a select few of us on air personalities that were there. So it was very Mm -hmm. bare bones. Um, And so I was like really adamant about making sure that like, I took all my vitamins then. Um, and then obviously I got vaccinated in April and then sure enough, like, I think it's because everybody just went right. Oh, you know, what's really weird though, is that in the summer. So obviously this summer was the first summer back with concerts. And so in August I had like a ton of, I had Luke Bryan and Mm -hmm. I had the anniversary show, Jason Aldean and, I had, um, like three appearances and I got a cold and I was like, what the hell? I was like, I hadn't been sick in like a year and a half. It was right. great. I'm like, 
people are a mask. I'm like masks and social distancing work because no one was sick. It was right. amazing. Right. But I also think it did suppress our immune system a little bit. I think the immune system didn't have to work as hard. Right. So like, did get back in front of people. Cause I like right away, it's like, Oh my God, I got COVID. And my doctor was like, you got a cold. It's because like you, you haven't been around a hundred thousand people in almost True. two years. So That's like, and, um, so then it, I got another cold in October and it was the same thing. I was at MSG for Harry Styles. I was at Wells Fargo Center for Eric Church. I had another appearance and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, so when I'm around all these people, my, it was a activated, right? Yep. Um, and uh, so then I, you know, still wearing a mask and everything. And so I was like scheduled to get my booster and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I have like, I'll get it. Maybe I'll get it over Christmas because like, I'll, you know, people kept saying they got a little sick and mm-hmm. then boop, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, woke up with a fever and I was like, now I was very fortunate. I really wasn't that sick. I was sick for like two days. I did have a little bit of a fever, but I didn't feel like I had a fever. I just like right. knew I had the fever. Um, but my doctor, so this really badass doctor, um, she's part of the women's integrative center at Jefferson and I've hypothyroid. So I started going to her for my thyroid. So she's an MD, but she does a lot of functional medicine too. So it's, okay. it's like a combination of like medicine if you need it and supplements. So I emailed her right away and she gave me this like massive list of supplements to take. And so the, uh, I was already started drinking Pedialyte and I swear the Pedialyte is what really helped. Okay. Like I drank like four containers of Pedialyte in like three days. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but like on her list, it was, it was majority of the stuff that I was already taking, like vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc. Um, she also told me to take, um, q also told me to take lysine. Yeah. Lysine is, um, a friend of mine tells me about that all the time. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, so q lysine, um, the, the norms. And then it was probiotics, but the PD light has probiotics and zinc in it. So like, I kind of did that. And then, um, a lot of people, when they have, I had really weird symptoms. Like I, I didn't lose my taste or smell. I really didn't have a cough. Mine was like, I was really tired and nauseous and a fever. Those were like mm-hmm. my main symptoms, a little mm-hmm. bit of a cough, but only if I like walked up the steps or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, so she also said like, a lot of people have like, my boss had it and he was like, my nerve, it was like affecting my nerves. He was so anxious and like on edge. Mm -hmm. So she also, and she like wrote that, she sent me this like long email. And um, like, so a lot of times she suggested ashwagandha, which is, which yeah is um is chill and melatonin yep because there's people who had a hard time sleeping yep so that was also on the list obviously i'm not a doctor i'm just telling you what my doctor no it makes me. sense no this put, is it, good. put this as a preference um yeah and um and so it was just kind of funny though because like i was always like super anal about like supplements and like making sure i'm getting my vegetables in and stuff and yep. when the when i the doctor said like i pro i probably had it like that tuesday or wednesday before thanksgiving and it was either like i think it was either the chair at home wall or I was at, I went to dinner and the, uh, I don't, cause I don't know anybody that had it, but like my best friend was with me both places. He smokes, he drinks. And I'm like, he doesn't do green smoothies every day. And I'm like, how did this bitch not get COVID? And I did. What the hell? I was like, this is so whack. I'm like, this is like when I, people, it, it's all genetics. It yeah. is it's like, you can manipulate the genes so much. But like, but I will say like, obviously I think being a, like making sure, cause one of my best friends who lives in Raleigh, she got it and it was really weird. It was like all, everybody who like got vaxxed in like March or April are all getting COVID now. Yeah. They didn't get their booster. And I kept saying like, I was the perfect science experiment because everybody that I came in contact with who was boosted, my parents, my aunt, one of my best friends, my Jamie, his mom didn't get it. And everybody who was vaxxed, but not boosted, got it. My wow. brother, my sister-in-law, my brother's best friend. So wow. like, how weird is that? Yeah, like, I was yeah. like, well, I'm the perfect science experiment that like the boosted people didn't get it. And the non-boosted people did. So like, there you go. This is an um, advertisement. I hope my friend watches this. <laughs> yeah, now she's going to be like, oh it, shit. It really is. It really is true. And like, so anyway, one of my friends in, who lives in Raleigh got it. And like, she really didn't take care of herself in the beginning. Like she kind of, cause it's like, you're, you're sick, but you're not really sick. So she has two kids. So she was still like doing all the things. And like, Dang. so she started to feel better. And then all of a sudden she had like a major setback. She had the t- chest tightness. I was like, girl, you, you got it. Like you have to sleep. Seriously. You got to drink the pee. Like what's up? Like you have a husband, like he in sickness and in health. You know? like, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, right. So like, for me, it's like, I it was like right away. Like I was doing the supplements. I was doing the Pedialyte. My mom had made, um, soup with like the leftover turkey so it was basically like chicken noodle oh, soup yes yeah turkey, turkey like, yeah. Bone, like bone broth yep. so like i had that twice a day mm. so i did really go into like 
active like wellness mode yeah um and i do think that that made a massive difference when you know and then i obviously slept and just tried not to do much but like mm -hmm. um i think that that really is important so even though i got it and i was like kind of joking around i'm like i can't believe i got it when i always, but i think the fact that it wasn't really that bad showed right. that, like you know what i mean so it, it matters to like just take care of yourself really yeah because that's what billy Eilish was just saying in an interview that she was like thank god you know i didn't have to be ho hospitalized but she said she was really bad but she yeah. said she's like i didn't feel like death but she's like i felt like death if that makes sense. you know like she was basically saying like i survived but yeah i mean it to me it's I mean, it really hit bad. joel and bead bad too i think yes yeah. and he, we already know now we and we don't know for a fact honestly because i know when they first started having to do the bubble thing like he was the first person to wear a hazmat <laughs> to practice because yeah. yeah, he yeah. was so scared of it but yeah. Yeah, and I feel bad for Tobias. I feel bad for all the guys. Like Seth Curry, yeah. Seth Seth Curry is an example of how he had it last year, and you see how long it took for him to get his energy yes. back. So yeah, the Sixers are going to be sucking for a while, yeah. <laughs> you know, until well, they yeah. get. Yeah, and together. Jason Tatum from the Celtics said that he had to use an inhaler after yeah. he had it. Yeah, yeah, it was my, just like it's it's no joke. It is because, no joke, and that's the thing too that I had to even tell myself was that like because I was like, oh, I'm still so tired, and I was like, oh, dude, like, and one of my coworkers had it last spring, I think, mm -hmm. or maybe like, and she said her sleep is still weird. Yeah, that, like she's still right, and it's just like it just affects people people differently. So I'm gonna so like I tested negative like not last Monday, the Monday before, and they said wait 30 days to get your booster. So. I'll get, um, so I'll have to, I'll have to do that because I'm like every, that's the thing is like, now we're have this, there's this new variant, but yeah. people still want to be like out and about now, luckily we're in Philly. So people still are wearing masks and right. like, I get, I get people are burned out from it, but it's like, it sucks. This is why we're still in it because we can't get free. Cause not everybody wants to subscribe to it. And honestly, we're at the point too, where you realize if people have an issue with it, like physically, like I had a, my boss couldn't even get the second Pfizer shot because she, her lymph nodes instantly reacted. And I understand that. Like she, yeah, she still right. had to get shingles. She still had to get a flu shot, but she couldn't finish the Pfizer thing. So she most likely won't get a booster. But like I said, anything that internally is going to be disrupted by this virus is going to get disrupted reg regardless mm -hmm. of whether mm -hmm. you're a healthy person, quote unquote, because healthy people have died too. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I just feel like people should stop acting like this is a hoax now, <laughs> like because oh this is our lives for the past like two years, almost three. So, well, and you know, I think it also what frustrates me is just from the very, very beginning of it. Um, you know, obviously like I'm very, I'm super liberal. I don't hide it at all, but mm -hmm. I really do believe if there was another president, if it was Bush or if it was Mitt Romney, or if it was McCain, another, another Republican, I just don't think that the response would have been the same. You know, I, I do go back, like say whatever you want about Bush. That's a whole other podcast, but like the way that he handled nine 11, like he was very adamant about like, we're not attacking Muslims. Like right. this is like, he like went on television and said it. And it's like, I really do believe if there was another Republican in office, um, they would have handled it differently. And they mm -hmm. would have been like, we need to wear masks. We need to stay home. Like, and again, like Trump's the one that pushed the vaccine. Like, just say it. Like, obviously, yeah. like, it, I get it. Like, it's like an eye roll, but like he yeah. did, like, he's the one that kind of put the, put it in motion and he got the vaccine. I, and I tell people all the time, I'll never forget when. So like Ivanka Trump on Instagram. So like she did a post mm -hmm. the day of Biden's inauguration, basically saying like, thank you so much. I love serving my country, blah, blah, blah. The next time she posted was in March. And it was a picture of her in jeans and a t-shirt in a mask, getting the vaccine from a Hispanic nurse in Miami. Mm -hmm. And she wrote how it's so important to get vaccinated and it's so important to wear your mask and thank you nurse, whoever. And I mean, the way that the people went in on her and mm -hmm. I was like, here's a perfect example of you created the mob and right. now the mob is turning on I'm you. I'm turning on like you. You people yeah. knew all along that this is what you should have been doing. I mean, you people all knew all along and because it was an elect, you made it, polit you made a you pandemic made it political. political. Right. And, and now like, here we are. And it's like the crazy Fox news people. And you know what I do think is really interesting though. And again, I can, we can talk about this for hours, but I do think it's interesting because even like, the boomers who are Trumpers are still pro-vax. And that's because they were the ones that used to get vaccinated in school. Right. They were the ones that, like my parents, like they would line up at recess and yeah. like get a vaccine. Yeah. So even though, like, like I guys always say like Uncle Phil, like my uncle, you know, and he like loves Fox News, but he's like the first to line up to get vaxxed because he <laughs> right. was just like, well, this is just like, like that's why we, we don't Yeah. Have 
like we don't have this anymore right. it's this weird right. age group of like the 30 40 and like maybe even like young 50 year olds who are like no nah, but because it's like well yeah we got vaccines when we were six months old because this is what a vaccine does it right. eradicates pandemics right it's so why we don't have polio and measles and smallpox and why we never that's really what i didn't it. understand i didn't understand because i said to myself how many people haven't gotten shots as kids why are we acting like this is a new thing yes and you know? not only that, but like you always had to have it. Like when you would like go to school, you had to be vaccinated. Yeah. You would go to college, you had to be vaccinated. Yeah. You know, colleges for the long, just over the last like 15 years, you had to be showed your vaccination for meningitis. Yeah. Thank it, remember you. How, do you remember that? Like 10 yes. years ago, how there was how so dramatic many dramatic that was. Yes. Yeah. Like yep. there was kids in college. I'm like, hello. But it's like, because <laughs> I of- didn't notice the difference. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, this is not, I mean, this is like the beauty of living in like, 2021 that like right. we have amazing scientists and and one of my mom's best friends she worked for Merck Pfizer and J&J over the course she's retired now but she's like do people not realize that like people have known about coronavirus for like decades yeah like, this is not new like no. people who study diseases yeah like you're fully aware of what's going on in the world and like your your immune system they are they know what disease what different diseases are right. and how there's so many different diseases in different parts of the world like immunology like this is what they do for a living like that's what i'm saying i'm like why did you especially because some of those new scientists that have been on these it, one of them was a black black woman scientist and I was like hell bring everybody on board I'm down yeah. like I wasn't ready to jump in line at the beginning of the year I'm gonna be honest but I was also one of those people who said okay I'm not gonna let this whole Tuskegee experiment you know deter yes. me if I get information I'm going to get it and I did and that's as hard as and I and I get that part of it right like I yeah. get how the past can affect you know your decision for the future and you're just like is this real is right. it you know but like but then it goes get goes back to progress you have to believe that like progress is a good thing right you know what i mean and like it, it's not how it was back then right. and i just think it's really funny too just about how like all these crazy anti-vaxxers will share a youtube video of some random ass doctor in the middle of nowhere indiana i'm like <laughs> so you have thousands and thousands of doctors who have gone to Harvard and yeah. Oxford and right, Princeton right. And, and, and Columbia there. I mean, these, they literally have dedicated their lives to study diseases, but you're going to believe one random ass doc who's not even an MD from right. Indiana with a YouTube channel. A YouTube channel. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. so crazy. We and have to tell people, like, turn it off, <laughs> turn off like, the YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And even like the athletes, I'm like, the first yeah. thing you do when you get hurt is you get a, you go to a doctor. Right, right. Yeah, like your I, I don't understand. Yeah, the Kyrie reason that your career these. is still existing is because you've been surgeries and cortisone shots. And who the hell else knows all the behind the scenes shit that they get injected into their body? Thank you. Thank you that they're not sharing. I mean, who who gave you tattoos? Who, who you know, yeah. you don't know what's in the deodorants you use. Like, like, come on, let's, let, where are we going with this? Like all the theories came out. They all sound the same. I don't, I don't care how they deliver it. It's the same thing. I'm yep. scared. I don't trust. Well, join the club, you know, Right. but jump in because we're going to be in this for a while. So yep. you're not helping by being resistant unless you have a adverse reaction. I understand. And like then American I do think it is kind of funny though, because they were like, um, oh, it's, you know, people who are, who are like, uh, do you ever watch like Jordan, um, Ke is it Kepler who's from the daily show and he like, will go to like the Trump rallies. Who yes. Go, like, I've watched his really shorts. Yep. Yep. But they're like, you know, this is just population control. And he was just like, so like all like the super rich and super intelligent people of the world are getting vaccinated. So like, those are the people that are going to be eradicated, but you are going to stay like, what do you yeah, really, yeah, yeah. because there was a really funny TikTok about, um, about the vaccine. And like, there was a, the comments on TikTok are the, always the best part, yeah, they are. but one of the ones underneath was like, I just always follow what rich people do. And I, it was like, this is the simplest comment. And it obviously had like 200,000 likes, but it's yeah. like, Oh wait, it's so true. Like whatever rich people do is like what you do because right. rich people are always the one that has the access to everything. Exactly. They're the ones that always get to like whatever rich people are doing, follow in line because they're always going to make the best choice for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to shell out the money because they got it. And Michael Che just did that in his, his most recent special. He made a joke about that. He was saying, I want the shot that Rihanna gets. I don't want the shot that you give somebody from the library. <laughs> He's yeah, like, I well, want the shot the that Rihanna gets. <laughs> yeah. 
but it's so true it's like it is true just like whatever whatever rich people are doing whatever rich people are taking like they're always going to be the first in line right. to make sure that like they're being taken care of the best right so like you just just check it out right yeah like, just whatever. follow the line and just figure it out and but but you know what nick I, I i love you for this and i love all this conversation and i swear I hope to meet you in person one day yes. because I just feel like this. I kind of knew I was going to really love this conversation just because I feel <laughs> like you're already my vibe from listening to Lipstick Lee. Thank you. But, um, and tell me too, what are your thoughts on this? I'm starting to listen to the singer Mickey Guyton. I'm not much about country, but I'm really starting to enjoy her. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I mean, listen, again, anytime there's a chance for progress, right? Anytime there's a chance for progress. And I think without like, I mean, we could probably talk for another three hours, but um, the thing about, uh, the whole conversation about diversity in country and even like women in country, people aren't talking enough about like Nashville and like the producers. Right. And it's like radio plays the hits. Right. And we don't have control over the hits. Now we used to radio used to be who makes the hits, but that's just not the case anymore. Right. Radio almost is after the song is about to, is, is getting to be a hit. Then we play it. And so mm -hmm. there's also the way radio works there's, there's just only a certain amount of songs we can play. Right. And so when Luke Bryan comes out with a new song, we're going to play that over a newer artist. Right. Is it, is it right? Probably not, but mm -hmm. it's the reality. And mm -hmm. so the thing about Mickey Guyton is that like, I want, I wish that like she was working with like the right people, or I wish there were people who are like, we're going to like make you a hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Because like, they're obviously they're doing, and sometimes I, I do, I do hope she's not being taken advantage of. Cause sometimes I like, I'm like, it, are they pushing her because she is a black, the one of the only yeah. black women in country music. Yeah. And I, that sometimes that bothers me, yeah, but at the same. same time, like, as long as she's making the money though, then I'm okay with that. Right. right. Like she probably knows that like. I'm, I'm like, you know, she's kind of like, they're making her almost like the token in country music exactly. but at the same time she is getting paid and that's real like that's good right? right but i wish that like i wish she was making i wish she was able to maybe not able and listen i don't know enough about the situation like maybe she maybe they are giving her songs and she's like i'm good like i don't even really like that song I'd yeah, rather yeah. Be yeah so like that might be the case too but part of me thinks that like her some of her songs i'm like why like she should be making a hit, right? There's right. songs that are on the radio that you know are radio songs. Right. And she hasn't like made one of those yet. But then you yeah. have Jimmy Allen, who he's from Delaware and he's like blowing the F up mm -hmm. and like, he knows what a hit is. So I'm just like, I can't figure that out. Yeah. I love it could her. be just her team, but yeah, I'm starting to Correct. like, all her lyrics are really good, but you're right. When I hear her music, I'm like, wow, this is really good. But I'm like, who is really listening that needs, to, that, it, that needs to make her the star she is? Cause you don't and want her to be might, the token. And again, maybe she wants that. I mean, maybe she's just like, I'm good with like making my music. Right. Because there's two types of music, right? There's music that are, is very like, lyric based and you're making you're an artist and you're making music for you that feeds your soul and then there's hits right now, sometimes it works out sometimes a hit is your soul but it's right. rare and usually I see that on people's first albums yeah they have all this ideas that, and, it, and that's why the first album is always so massive and then by album two three four it just is about like making music which is interesting like even with ed sheeran's new album mm -hmm. like it's such it's so different from his other stuff yeah and for me i'm like where's thinking out loud right like where's like he he used to be this like soulful yeah and now he's making you know like bat it's not a bad song but i'm like <laughs> yeah it's not but there's i think that there's it's even with bruno, bruno mars the the Same. whole bruno mars um you know like sonic when he when he put that out everyone was like this is not uptown funk like, right right but like, I think in his mind, he, I think there are some artists that make music for themselves. And I think this Bruno Mars project, he made it for himself. I think he was yep. probably born in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make like soulful 70, like he yep. wanted to do that. And yep. he's just like, I don't feel like doing uptown funk right now. Like right. I want to do this. And even though people were like, this is a little boring, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's good, yeah. but it's not the Bruno that like people, what people but yeah, the want, right? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so 
I do think that people have to realize that more sometimes they forget. And I think that like, there's artists that make music for themselves sometimes. And then there's yeah. artists that make music for the masses. Mm -hmm. um, and then I sometimes think artists by the, when they're rich enough, it's like Taylor Swift, like Taylor Swift did folklore because she, if you know her, she's always loved like weird indie music. Yeah. And she's made pop music and made country music because like, she knew that that would be a thing, but like folklore and evermore. I mean, they were indie. That's like indie music because like she wanted to do that and, and it like worked out. So Mickey Guyton might very much say like, I want to just do this for me. Mm -hmm. I just wish that she had a couple songs that we could play. Cause I want to rally. Like, I mean, I talk about her once in a while on the air. Like, obviously if she's like in the news, like she was on the Macy's float, mm -hmm. but like, we don't play her. Yeah, and I know. And like, she was hosting the award shows. That's why I was shocked. I was like, they gave her the show to host on the CMA show or whatever right. it was. And, but then I thought, I thought the same thing when I saw her on the float, I was like, all right, let me listen to a couple of her albums. And I really did love them. But then I said, God, there's so many good messages in here. But I feel like black women wouldn't hear her if she's not put on massive radio. Yeah. You know? And you're right. And, then and I I'm hate, hoping. like, maybe like that, maybe it starts with maybe she does some kind of collabo first, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And just like makes the song and like, cause there's another black artist, his name's Breland and he's actually from South Jersey. Okay. And he's okay. like about like, he's like in that like, lower level of like like he's starting to kind of make waves in country okay um massive sixers fan massive eagles fan it's pretty cool um mm -hmm. been in nashville for a couple of years but he has a song out now with dirks bentley okay so like dirks is so well established mm -hmm. the song's really good he's on the song with him so it's like it sucks that it's like okay here we go you have to like be on the back of yeah. a white person again you know what i mean yeah, yeah, but yeah. If you're, a, if you're, if you know, but it, I guess it, uh, like the other side of it is like, he's still on this massive song. And right. so it gives him exposure till he builds himself up till he's able to kind of get, you know, to where, um, to where he needs to be. So I hope that like, it, it's definitely more diverse. It's, yeah. get, it's, it's, but again, it kind of goes back to what I was saying just about being in country in general was that like, it's really crazy just over the course of the last, you know, five years, um, when you see like the conversations and you yeah. see, you know, my boss who's been in, in country for almost 20 years, he was like, what's been happening the last couple of years would, would never even have been like yeah, the whole Morgan Wallen thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. everybody pulled this, pull this music right away. Yeah. And Ross is like, that would have never happened even five years ago. Like right. everybody just would have ignored it. Right? right. And like, um, now we're you know, like, no, like we gotta, and it, and it sucks because I loved him. Like yeah. I loved him. And I was like, are you kidding me, dude? Yeah. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was so annoyed with that. And then it was interesting though, too, because there was a couple of black artists in country who like Darius Rucker was one who like yep. kind of yep. stuck up for him. And I'm yep. like, are you sticking up for him because you know him and you want to, or is it, or is it the fact that like, you don't want to lose your white country listener? True. Yeah. And that's what I always look at. Like what my first instinct is always the first option. You know, he's my friend. Like I, I know he wouldn't say that to me or whatever. I'm like, what do you, what do you Right. Want? So part of me yeah. thinks like, do you know that like you sell out arenas and yeah. so much of your audience are, are white country listeners. And so you're like, if I, if I say really what I want to say, like I might lose half my audience, but then at the end of the day, I'm like, well, if they want to get paid and like, they're like, he's a black man. And if he's right. saying that, like, I'm making it like, I can't, I'm a white woman. Like I'm right. not going to tell him how to think, you know right. what I mean? But it's just such an, I'm glad the conversations are happening, obviously, because it it, it is so important in country music that yeah. they are starting to do this, especially because so much of country is based off of black music. Right. You know, and like, right. that's the reality of it too. And when you go to the, I mean, I went to the country hall of fame years ago when I was in Nashville before I worked in country music. I mean, it's very prominent um, with Charlie pride and like yeah. all of that. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, it's getting, the, and I, my boss says to me too, cause he knows how passionate I am. He's just like, I think change doesn't happen overnight. So I know that like for you, you want everything to happen immediately. He's immediately. like, but you have to understand how far it's come. Yeah. So like have that hope that like it continues to go that way. And continue and like, to talk about it. I mean, cause you got right. artists like Kane Brown who I just now discovered and I didn't even realize he was biracial and he yeah. did that song with her, which is really pretty called blessed and free. I think it is. It's a really, he's such song. a, he's such a genius though, because, okay. So he had right now he has like almost a number one song in country called one Mississippi, like super country. Okay. 
Okay. Then he had the song with her. Yeah. It's like R and B. Yeah. Then he had the song. He he's had like two different songs, like one with Diplo and one with Black Bear that are like EDM type songs. So mm. like he's been and he just did Jingle Ball. So like and he's coming back for his own country tour in February. So he's, so he's so managed he to like cross eliminated. all these genres. Good. And his Good. wife is from Westchester. So like he's always in Philly. He's nice. he's, he's super 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 cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But like, yeah, I think that um, it's it's good. It's good that you're we're having the conversation. You know what I mean? Which, which is which is a great thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and people and there's a lot of the country artists that like are using their voice, which is a good thing. Yes. Um, right. And you just like hope that like it gets even like bigger and louder, you know? As, yeah. As- and even if it does have to cross over to different genres, it's probably good. Like maybe if Mickey Guyton got a song with Cl- Kelly Clarkson or somebody right. who, you know, or who's that girl? Um. Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande or even, right. uh, what's that Bellatini girl, Kelsey? What's oh, Kelsey name? Ballerini. Yeah. yeah. Like someone mm-hmm. like her, totally. like, you know, t- to the blend the youth and then also blend the genres, then she might be able to just sneak her way into her own little lane. But you're right. I like right now what she's doing. But yeah, I figured I'd want to get your pulse because I was like, how is she doing yeah. in that market? Cause... It really does. Because like, I've worked in radio for so long and I am so much about hits. Like I always say, like, I love the hits. Yep. And I always say it's like a first. Now I'm a beats person. I'm not a lyrics person. So half yeah. the time I sing these country songs about fishing and, <laughs> you know, and, and like going down to the Delta, you know, Delta yeah. blue. And I'm like, what the hell? You know, as I like live in center city, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. But I lo- like, I love, the, I love the way the music sounds. Like oh, the, yeah. you know, one of my favorite songs in country is Luke Combs, Love It On You. Mm. And, um, and like one of the first lines is like, don't get me wrong. I'm like a barber on a water hook. Him, 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 reel it. I'm like, I haven't gone fishing since like 1992, <laughs> you know? But like, it's such a, it's such a good song. And the first time I heard it was he was on SNL Mm -hmm. and I was like, I text my boss. I was like, this is the first listen hit. Like I just, there's like been many songs. Sam Hunt is a song out now called 23. There's a song with Maren Morris and her husband, Ryan Hurd chasing after us. So hot. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, first listen hit, first listen hit. And, um, and so I understand that there are people who love lyrics. Right. I get that for me. I'm like, whatever. I don't really care about the lyrics. Right. Right. Um, I like music because I like, I like it to make me dance and shake my ass. Mm-hmm. And there are people who like want to listen to the lyrics and like feel. So I totally get it. Mm-hmm. But for radio, I mean, we play the hits. That's just the reality of it. You're not on the radio yep. unless you're playing the hits. And so yep. that's just like what it is. And and so in regards to, I want there to be more diverse artists in, in country. And um, and so I think it's getting there. I just think it's it's probably gonna it's probably gonna take. You know, it's not going to be as quick as, as we can, Mm-mm. but there's more black male artists than female, which then that like makes me mad. I know. Like, then we go there on. again. Exactly. It's like what they feel safe with promoting or yes. what putting up there. Yeah, you're right. It's like I it's mean, a whole, you know, it's like a whole conversation of just that in, in general and like the, yeah. And I have I hope it's going to be a black version of like Miranda and the, oh, what's that group that I love that she formed? The Yes. I, yeah. loved, I loved their first album. And I said, yeah. maybe there'll be a black diverse version of that kind of a group that might. It would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, it would be, yeah. it would be amazing. Cause it's like, and then it's always like when they do some kind of like, they want to do some kind of like hip hoppy. It's like Nelly. He's like the token. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like, cause he makes white people feel safe. You know what I mean? <laughs> Florida so Jones, it's like, Florida Nelly's Pamela. on it. I'm like, how many freaking songs can we have with Nelly? Like, come on. Nelly's the token. <laughs> He's the token. It's like, yeah. it's like, my, that's all my, my theory is Michael Strahan. Like, yeah. my theory is Michael Strahan is like, he is like, he makes white women feel quote safe. unquote safe. Yeah. And so yeah. it was like, he has like the gap teeth. He's silly, mm. you know, and it's like, and, and like, it's, I mean, this is another whole conversation, but it's like, you know, you have Leanne from, you know, Nebraska who like secretly wants to sleep with Michael Strahan, but she could like never really actively do it. Right. She's, married, she's married to Paul, the plumber. So she just watches him like on good morning America and lust and lo- and thinks about him at night. You know what I mean? Exactly. I'm so, yeah, yeah that's definitely gonna be another topic. Cause I do this yeah. other show where I'm trying to blend people and I call it the link up and I want to throw different topics out. And I definitely think it's time to start throwing out that conversation about people who do kind of fetishize which i'm guilty of with white guys and and and, but still the reality is why are you still not comfortable with having this person as your 
your quote unquote mate in yes. person as opposed to being on the side. So, but, um, but this has been great. I, yeah, I love this whole conversation. So I love you for doing this, Nick. Yeah, of course. And, um, as you know, we don't have our Eagles on today. So I'm a little bummed watching other people play. I mean, but it's so funny that we both wore Eagles. Look, I always do. Cause I always try to represent when I'm on here. Yeah. We always yeah. have a touch. All my people. That whole thing was like, that's a whole other conversation too about how <sighs> whack that was. It's like the NFL put these rules in place to mm -hmm. basically to contradict themselves. The whole point of why they made those crazy rules in the beginning of the season was to, to what's the word I'm looking for to avoid what avoid happened this that. weekend. Yeah. It was like, you, you and they and then they went back on their word and they just rescheduled like it was nothing and then if you find out that all these guys are negative then what happens monday you know what i mean what if monday is a whole nother bunch of positives all, out of nowhere because you gave them extra days you know what i mean like that's what like, i hate it fills it just like it again it like fills me with rage because i was just like this is it's just so typical for them to like go back on what they said mm -hmm. And like, it, it just makes me, ugh. And they wouldn't do it to Tom Brady if that was the case. You know, they probably would have been like, oh, Bucks are fine, but Philly can Absolutely. suffer for two days. A hundred percent. It's all, right. it's like, it's the whole, yeah, I just, ugh, it makes It's annoying. Crazy. I said, God forbid if we had won a Super Bowl right back to back, we might be spared, but God forbid mm -hmm. they God accuse forbid. us of, of, you know. Yeah, because we're like not on the radar. Year. We're like not on the radar anymore. We're just yeah. like, it's the gate, you know, they're just like, Philly doesn't matter. Even like Washington doesn't really matter. It's right. like not, it's just like whatever. I mean, come on. I mean, let, let's just get it over with. Let's just beat them 50 to nothing and get it over with. Like, why do we have with. to let, you know, because they I don't know. have anybody right now. Bare bones. Why not? Just give us a nice little convincing win. Right. But just like, let us do it. Let us do it. But I thank you so much. And I will continue so to listen to you and Nat. And uh, right. I hopefully we'll get her next. I know she's busy, but hopefully one day I'll get her sitting down with me on five questions. But I appreciate you. I will continue to listen to Lipstick League. And definitely now I'm definitely going to try to tune in more to, to TX925. Uh, X to you, uh, country station. Yeah, we have a free app, so you can download the app and then you can listen anywhere. So yes, if you're just like yes. sit at your desk, you could just like pull up that and be like, oh hey, hey. I definitely will now because I feel like I feel like we we're friends in my head. So now it's like the reality. Well, now so. we're friends in real life. So there you go. Yes, there you go. And where can people uh, follow you on social media? What, what uh, you it's Nic all the social media platforms. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. It is Nicole is Nick. So N I C O L E is N I K. Okay, cool. Well, I think um, have a very much. happy holiday too. You too, as well. Happy New Year and all that good stuff, and hopefully more positive things to come in 2022. Please, you too. Lord. All the good voodoo. All, all the good voodoo. things. Good yeah. cars, big, 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 and a man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh. All right, girl. Have it was good, good to talk, talk to you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Bye bye.